the Chase Thomas podcast for people who have nothing but time to kill. Um, Matt Green, let's dive into our week four picks and preview. Uh, week four already here when you know it. And I think we start with Tennessee, Oklahoma. What say you? Yeah, let's do it, man. That's game of the week. College game day. All right. Oklahoma, fa- or excuse me, home dogs. Seven point home dogs on ESPN bet here going into this big time battle with the Tennessee Volunteers, both three and oh, both have looked very differently. Um, getting to that three and oh, Oklahoma's only big win was against one of the worst teams in FBS and Temple in that first week, struggling with Tulane and Houston in the last two weeks. But, um, big game, Josh Heibel's first game back at Norman as a head coach. Um, Oklahoma's first SEC game. Um, it's going to be rocking. It's going to be a big deal. Um, two former five-star quarterbacks in the same class, two top five quarterbacks in the same class in Jackson Arnold and Nico Ia Maliaba. What say you, Matt Green, about this game? So I think on paper, everyone is just expecting a Tennessee blowout. You know, I mean, you've seen Oklahoma. I'm not going to say play with their food because like this Houston team does look to be pretty bad this year. Not necessarily like they've been respectable in recent years, but I think we know Tulane is like a pretty good team. They've been a good program recent years. So like playing a couple close games, like the the Houston, you know, performance, like that was that offense just looked bad. So um, there's really no, you know, uh, you know, making that look better. But but the, the Tulane win, I feel like ultimately was was a good win. Right. You won by multiple scores, even though it was a close game. Tenant, I would say like we talked about last week, like. Nobody has graded higher in all of college football than Tennessee through the first three games. I think I think I saw the strength of schedule is like what are they Tennessee's like a hundred and tenth or something through the first three. So it's like mm-hmm. it hasn't been a been against the best competition, but we're seeing them drop 70, 1, 69, like dropping a 50 spot on NC State. And you know, jury's still out on that NC State team. Um, but I think, like you said, this is gonna be just the most electric atmosphere in college football this weekend. Like I, I heard somebody talking about it. Like, is this the biggest home game in like Oklahoma history? And I had to start thinking about it because every year they get that Texas game in, in the Cotton Bowl, right? And we we kind of know that the Big Twelve is kind of doesn't have the biggest brands, you know, through the years. It's really Oklahoma and Texas that were really, you know, propping up that conference for a while. Obviously, you know, we're talking post Nebraska heyday. So, like, I think there's a case to be made. Like, obviously, they played the home and home of Ohio State a couple years ago. They had the home and home of Tennessee. And, I mean, that was – both of those games were were, were uh, great atmospheres when, when they played with Baker Mayfield a few years back. I just – I think their first game in the SEC, this – there's something about – Oklahoma's going to come out, like, the best we've seen them all year. I think this game is going to be – I said it before the season started. Like, this is going to be the game of the year. I just think there's something there's something about this game that just excites me, and I feel like it doesn't say anything about these these defenses. I think we could see a track meet. Like I think we could see these. This just be a game where a, a, a lot of action is happening. I see. I kept going back and forth because obviously Tennessee could win this game by four touchdowns, and, and Nico, this could be you know Nico for Heisman could be everyone's takeaway from this game. I just, there's something about Oklahoma. I I think people are kind of sleeping on them right now. I think this is going to be an amazing game. And I'm going to say Tennessee pulls it out 31-30 right at the end. So give me Tennessee to win this game, but Oklahoma to uh, to cover the spread. Interesting. Also, Cole Kubelik put out, because Georgia and Tennessee just can't get away from each other. Tennessee and Georgia have not allowed an offensive touchdown in their last 16 quarters. That is tied for the active longest streak in FBS. I didn't realize they were tied with the stat. I knew that both had not given up because uh, y'all didn't give up uh, any the offensive four. touchdowns against Florida State and Tennessee yeah. did not against uh, Iowa as well. So they're right there. It was uh, as 17 I said, quarters. We uh, would have been in the college football playoff last year, but mm. you know, we don't want to have to rehash that. Well, Tennessee, if one bad game in Columbia doesn't happen. They're in the college ball playoff two years ago. It's true. Weird circumstances. But, Matt Green, it's interesting that you think um, ultimately this game is going to be close because one of the things that I've struggled with talking to different people and um, and the more important issues guys tonight and 
I've written about it extensively this week and I write about it more um, and do my three thoughts and a prediction on Friday over there at TPL Tennessee. But what I've struggled with is ha- the scenario where this game's close because I think in previous years, this game would absolutely be close. I would probably lean towards Oklahoma winning. Like there's the Florida Emory Jones game in 2021. There's Matt Corral at Tennessee in, in 2021. Um, that jump out immediately. Tennessee had a lot of problems with mobile quarterbacks on third down. Um, really early on, Stetson killed them on third down a lot with his legs, uh, his two years at Georgia. Um, Tennessee had problems Arson Beck there. even last year. And that was a totally different game. Like that, that I wouldn't say that that was the issue with Tennessee. No, I just last noticed year. that because yeah. we, we highlighted that pregame. But yeah. keep, go ahead. But I look at how many ways this game can ultimately go. And what I think is most interesting and the only way, because like Jackson Arnold leads Oklahoma in rushing right now. The offensive line's been bad. Um, They're banged up. I think they're on their like third string center. That's bad against this Tennessee front seven. I think this Tennessee front seven is best in college football. I've made no secret about that. I think they should kick Oklahoma's offensive line's ass like i think i i keep going back to i don't know how oklahoma's offensive line holds up in a similar way to how nc state their offensive line just could not handle tennessee's defensive line as the game wore on and it just got uglier and uglier and uglier and tennessee's fresh like they have guys key guys james pierce joshua joseph Samari thomas who are playing 20 around 20 ish snaps um here through three weeks a game because they've been in blowout wins and they've been able to rotate and keep these guys fresh they're healthy along the defensive line they're healthy along the offensive line um i don't see how oklahoma wins in the trenches here and that's what decides a lot of these SEC games is what the trench play looks like i don't think oklahoma has a way of winning that with their current roster i think it helps that they're getting anderson back at wide out he was i think their leading touchdown receiver um last season that'll help they're relying on a true freshman running back um there with Jackson Arnold, I think that's a recipe for disaster in this game. Tennessee, obviously one of the best rush defenses in college football. I don't think Oklahoma's going to be able to run on them. They're going to have to sustain a lot of drives and keep Tennessee off the field because part of what I've seen is like, well, maybe if it's close, like the only way it's close is if Oklahoma's scoring 35 plus. And I have not seen an offense at Oklahoma through three weeks that is capable of scoring 35 plus to beat Tennessee. Like I don't, I don't think it's possible with the way they're currently constructed. Um, the Vols are number one in team hung toys. Like fifty on this team hung fifty on like Temple, so it's like yeah. I mean that's Temple. That's one of the that's, three that's worst teams in FBS this Tennessee. year. That's always seen from Tennessee, really. So far, no. You know? Tennessee it's, dropped it's fifty-one on NC State, and they could have met dropped more. It could have been no. That's worse. true. NC State's definitely or Tennessee's t- clearly been better. I'm just saying. We've seen both of these teams have blowouts against the inferior team. So, and NC State, I think the jury is still out on how bad they might be right now with Grayson McCall getting benched and stuff like that. But, well, I think I, he's um, banged up. I don't know. I, I'm just saying. I, I think we don't necessarily know. Like your de- the defensive stats always look better when you're playing like some some of the worst competition. Right, out but there. it's not even about like the stats. It's just the reality is. You watch them and they are they're like you can talk about like the competition or whatever. They're tied with Georgia, the best defense in the sport, the last four quarters. They they're tied. Like four quarters of four quarters straight of no defensive touchdowns. Like there's just no way to sugarcoat that. Like you can harp on people, whoever. There has it's been nearly perfect. I don't see Oklahoma being able to overcome the trench play. I don't think they're gonna be able to score enough because Ultimately, Tennessee is going to get there. Dylan Sampson has nine touchdown runs through three games. He's averaging seven yards a carry. Their running back two is averaging 10 yards a carry in Deshaun Bishop. They have run roughshod over everyone through this point. Tennessee has like the scariest part if you're an Oklahoma fan right now is that Nico has still not played an A game. I think he's been solid. Nico hasn't even played a real full game. All Like the game was in hand against NC State late. Like he's not played a 
open to close close football game yet like he blew out iowa he blew but at out the Chattanooga. same time this is nico's first road start of his career like, no charlotte counted and if charlotte he has had a played... lot of nc state fans in there that was a no, road we're start not counting. no get out of here we're not it counting. counts as a road start we're not counting charlotte get out of here that's a neutral i mean it was site. a road start it wasn't you a there's more nc state fans and tennessee fans there yeah it was like 60 40 nc state 60 40 that's what i'm saying you're going into oklahoma their first first uh, home game in the SEC. I think I understand. I'm not saying it's not going to be different, but what I'm also saying is Nico, like this is where it starts in terms of he's going to build a Heisman campaign. Cause one of the things that hurts his Heisman case, he has the fe- fourth best Heisman odds right now, but the only way he gets in this competition is if he has a game where Tennessee's running game is stuffed and Oklahoma is top 22. I think they're number 22 in rush defense through three weeks. Dominic Williams, the TCU transfer DJ Terry, former Tennessee defensive tackle in the middle like i think they're gonna be able to they're gonna give tennessee the most amount of problems running the football that anyone has this year that opens the door for nico to really really dominate um over the air and wide receivers are going to step up in this game brent venables is going to throw a lot he knows hypo well obviously he was the dc when hypo was the quarterback in that national title team um in 2000 but I just think if they shut down the run, I think Tennessee is going to beat them through the air. I don't think there's a scenario. I, I just, I keep trying to figure out how this game's close, Matt. And I just don't think it's going to be close. I think maybe it's close to the half. This to me, they're 58th in pass defense. I don't, I don't like what What'd I'm seeing think? here. I, I don't think Oklahoma is going to be able to hang with Tennessee in this one over four quarters. So give me Tennessee 45 Oklahoma 17. Would you say that uh, Tulane is better than anybody that Tennessee has played so far? I don't know. A healthy, normal NC State, I think, is still better than Tulane. I I think um, there's a chance we're just overrating what Tennessee has done through these first three weeks against inferior competition. Like that doesn't mean they're not a top 10, not e- that doesn't mean they're not a na- the best team in the country, but I think we could still be uh, overrating what they've done through these first three weeks. And I think it, it kind of feels like, like if you go back to like a Georgia Notre Dame, you know, back in 2017 or something like if this is one of those games where it's like, I don't feel like style points are going to matter. You know, it's a game that Nico could be, you know, 20 of 35, two touchdowns, two picks, but you win by one point. And as a Tennessee fan, you couldn't care less. This is an amazing win. So I I feel like there's kind of this notion of Tennessee now comparing themselves to the national title contenders. Oh, you have to go in and make a statement. Like you don't have to make any sort of statement. You go into Norman, Oklahoma and win. It could be by one point. Then it's one of the better wins in college football of this 2024 season just because of just the extracurriculars, just the the atmosphere, Oklahoma in the SEC, Hypel going back to OU, just everything involved with it. This is a this is a big game, and I think Tennessee. I just think uh, it's closer than the experts think. Like there's something about the game when game day comes to town. Like we were counting out South Carolina a week ago, and like they were the better team for three. I mean, you could argue that they were the better team for four quarters in that game, honestly, but. They they just came out the 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 energy was there. I think uh, I think the home field is going to play a big factor in this game. Maybe, maybe I just think Oklahoma has real problems offensively. I don't think they're going to have the defense to keep Tennessee out of the end zone enough. Like I just don't see a seventeen to twenty four. They got to keep this low scoring and drag Tennessee into the mud if they're going to have a chance to win this football game. And I just don't think they're going to be able to do that. I think Tennessee ultimately is so good in the trenches this year, especially. I think they're going to win most of these games because their trench warfare is just better than the other teams over four quarters. I think they're going to just crockpot teams. And it's a different place than Tennessee's been in in a long time. But I just don't think most teams, like Jackson Arnold is going to, like what he's going to have to deal with James Pierce and Joshua Josephs. Are you saying, how are you using the term crockpot? Like they're gonna crock pot like, them. like they're cook? gonna be close and slow cook them. Yeah, like they're gonna like the they're gonna crock pot them. They're gonna it's gonna be close maybe in the first half and then you look in the beginning of the fourth quarter and it's like thirty eight seven Tennessee and you're like whoa 
that got really bad really quickly. And I think it just, my gut is, it's just going to unravel for Oklahoma in the second half. I think maybe they fool some people into thinking it's going to be a close game in the first half. But I just, I think Tennessee's going to run away with it. I think Tennessee wins big and they cover. Um, Next up here, Matt Green, let's go to the second biggest game of the weekend, Utah at Oklahoma State. Kind of a default, like, winner clinches in Big 12 title berth, uh, championship berth, it seems like in this game. Um, this is probably the toughest game to pick for me on the pick this week. What say you, Matt Green? Yeah, I'm with you. We uh, we talked about last week was like a, a, a diet uh, elimination game since it didn't actually count yeah. as a conference game with Kansas State and Arizona. This is this feels like a real one. This could be the game of the year in the Big Twelve. Nicely done, nephew. The Chase Thomas podcast. Ah! Hell yeah. <laughs>